All right, um, so my project I'm working on Towards the Stars, and I'm working on the AI for our network game. Um, this semester, I really focused on two different AI. Uh, we have a space pirate, and then we have kind of a, a duo bot team, uh, which we call Seek and Destroy. And so um, I'm just going to kind of talk about the stuff before I go in and show it, um, just because it's kind of one man team right here. So. With the Space Pirate, Space Pirate, what we really wanted to accomplish with them was someone that would come into your ship and start to destroy your ship equipment internally. Um, and then, you know, if you, if you show up, they'll fight you. But they're not looking for a fight, they just want to wreak havoc on your ship and then, you know, kind of leave you stuck out there in space. So, they were, that was the first moving AI I implemented in Unreal 4. And I definitely learned a lot um, along the way. And you know, I, don't, I think it's in a really good place now. Um, but if I were to go back and redo it, there's a few things I would definitely change. Um, you know, one of the big challenges I faced this semester, and even last semester as I began working on this stuff, is that Unreal is constantly changing. Um, even now, we're not on the most up-to-date version of Unreal. Um, and whenever they made changes, um, you know, they were also changing how their AI system worked. So like one of the big changes this semester was instead of um, you know, navigation being a, like a part of each character, um, it instead was like a global, um, a global thing that you know, characters would have to make a query to. They'd have to ask for like, you know, oh, is there a path to this? Um, stuff like that. So that changes some of the API calls, um, <coughs> things like that. And then um, I guess another one of the things I would do differently, one of the things I would change is the AI is almost too free flowing. Um, it's a little bit hard to replicate any bugs that come up. Um, that's you know it's both a good thing and a bad thing that the AI isn't is kind of free to do you know whatever happens. Um, but yeah, because of that there's a lot of different situations that can come up. Um, things change, especially since this is a multiplayer game. You know, one player interacting with them versus four players interacting with them. You know, it changes the dynamic completely. It's a little bit different how you balance things. Um, but yeah, overall, I thought it was pretty. I thought it turned out pretty well. Um, so, and then in addition though to the space pirate, I also with seek and destroy. Uh, seek and destroy, they really could care less about your ship equipment. They're really there to just seek and destroy. Um, and so instead of roaming to like the nearest equipment, um, and instead of knowing where the players are at all times, they wander around the ship. Um, and you know, for wandering around the ship, I just placed waypoints, and they randomly decide which waypoint they want to go to. And, um, but they work as a team because they're actually two different entities. Um, and so if Seek gets too far ahead of Destroy, you know, it'll stop and wait for Destroy to catch up. Um, and if, uh, and you know, if one of them gets destroyed, then the other one really doesn't know what to do. So <coughs> if you destroy Seek, uh, Destroy kind of gets sucked, and <coughs> just sits there, it doesn't know where to go. Um, it'll just shoot any players that show up. Um, but if you, you know, destroy, destroy Seek, kind of freaks out and just runs all over the ship. Um, anyways, so I'm going to just hop in and show you one at a time um, the <coughs> AI. I'm going to make it a little bit here. There's sound, uh, it's not coming through the TV right now, and um, it's not really essential, I guess, to showing what the AI can do. Um, so I'm just going to kind of wander up here, <coughs> and then I'm going to you know, kind of eject to get a view of what the spa space pirate does like behind the scenes. So here's our space pirate. Um, and what he's 
doing, he's destroying our reactor down here. Um, originally, our space pirate though, he spawned up here in the ship. Um, so he's able to navigate his way to the closest equipment um, and then start destroying it. So now when I take over for our player, I'm gonna grab the gun from our security room just so I can fight him. But you know, as I come in here, you now he's destroyed that equipment. Now I can see him now. And I haven't, you know, now he's coming, he's trying to come and find me. Um, but yeah, as I jump down here, he's chasing me. So, but yeah. Um, you know, there's a couple interesting things you can do with him. When he's chasing you, it's kind of annoying. Um, so you can like try to lock him out. And then when you lock him out, he's gonna stop and try to shoot the door console. So, um, one of the things I would have liked to figure out how to do is to reroute them. Um, but uh, with closing doors and opening doors, I decided not to have the doors actually affect the nav mesh because of the cost. Um, with doing that, or if you train, have them moving and then constantly change the nav mesh, it can cause issues. So I just like, you know, I kind of override their behavior. There. But yeah, he sees me again, and I'm just gonna blow him up, destroy it. Um, so it's not, you know, it doesn't seem like much of a challenge that, um, but that's the easiest difficulty. When we increase the difficulty, we add in more, uh, more than just one space pirate. Um, and we're also, we're working on tweaking the uh, values for damage and stuff. So, I'm going to start with, um, start Seek and Destroy now. Um, and yeah, as I said, you know, they work a little differently. So I'm going to come in here though, and eject again. And try to find them. Um, because they move around the ship randomly, sometimes it's a little more difficult than others. But to hear the doors moving, so. <laughs> right. <laughs> look warm. Okay, oh, there they are. <laughs> So, yeah, they're just wandering around the ship. You can kind of get a view down here of what they see. Um, but, all right, now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go fight them and just kind of show you, you know, what happens, you know, when you kill, destroy, um, and then see, see kind of freak out. So, all right, they were just down here. Let's hope they didn't go too far. Um, and, like, well, it seems like, oh, I mean, he's doing a lot of looking for them to, like, <coughs> kind of be, you know, this isn't, it's like he could almost avoid avoid them. Yeah, you know, possibly, but I'm only one player right now, and right now, also, there's no other, you know, activities around the ship. Oh, there it is. So there's no reason for me to, like, run around the ship. Um, at the moment, but you know, in the game, there's actually going to be more motivation um, to run around the ship. So yeah, I destroyed, destroy, and Seek just freaked out and ran away. Um, we'll see it coming around eventually. Now oh, there it is. But so. and it's kind of hard to shoot. But anyways, um, that's just kind of our basic demo of how they work. And yeah, any questions? So the seeker's behavior is long away. Yeah, the seek when seek doesn't have destroy to back it up, it runs away. Okay. Um, and I guess one of the other things I didn't show there that's different between them is seek and destroy. Um, since they're robots, they're kind of like drones, like a like an R two D two type <coughs> thing. They can override equipment. So, like, if you try to lock them out in the same way that you do the pirates, the door just won't close. They'll man they'll open it themselves. Um, and yeah. Yes. Just visually, a quick question about the seeking the 
this drive. Uh -huh. Did you guys aim for like having it merge with the environment or like kind of it looks very similar and Oh, so, so we haven't got the new models yet. Yeah. Okay. We're I was still just curious. It's like, okay, it looks like the environment, yeah. and somebody will figure it out. Um, like. And like, <laughs> one of, I guess one of the tricks I did with um, was that um, if I pull them, actually pull one of them up, they, so they're supposed to be, you know, flying around the ship, but uh, 3D navigation is not, I mean, it's really difficult to do, and it's, beyond what our game could handle adding in. So I essentially, I just ha I have this glider. Um, it goes all the way to the ground. So it's as if it was on the ground and walking. Um, and with our final art assets, there's going to be an animation that's got like bobbing and stuff. So it gives the appearance of flying without actually having the same um, impact on the machine and computing as flying. Any other? All right, well, anyways, if uh, that's all for now, um, but you guys should come to Demo Day and check out our final game then, which is May two, two weeks from Wednesday. May 13th, 11 yeah. a.m. to 2 p.m. We're gonna have food, we're gonna have some music. So. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. You get to try out big different games. Um, and I don't know, it's pretty interesting to just see what other people have been working <coughs> on this semester. All right, thank you.